So as we've begun this journey through the season of Lent, as I mentioned, we're going to be focusing on spiritual practices or spiritual disciplines, rhythms that have been passed from generation to generation within the church at large. Some of the practices that we're going to discuss are commanded specifically by God in the scriptures. Other disciplines are practices that Jesus invited his disciples to partake within and that freedom and that grace that he has brought to us. We've titled the series Sacred Rhythms because in practicing these spiritual disciplines throughout our daily life, we create rhythms of turning to our Savior day by day, being fed, renewed, strengthened in his truth and grace. And so these rhythms actually bring us life in our Savior Jesus Christ versus obligations and burdens. We're going to start with what I would argue, alongside many others, one of the most important sacred rhythms in our life as disciples of Jesus. But it's a rhythm that is often misunderstood, abused, and just flat out neglected by so many. The sacred rhythm of Sabbath. Grab your Bibles, Bibles in front of you, your phone, and go with me to Exodus chapter 31. We heard it just a few minutes ago, uh, by, read by one of our students. Exodus chapter 31. At this point in Exodus, the Israelites are encamped around Mount Sinai in the wilderness after fleeing and being rescued from Egypt. They're camped around Mount Sinai as Moses is on top of the mountain, receiving commands from God about how God's freed people are now to live their lives to his glory and honor. And so one of the final commands that God reiterates to Moses before he, he heads back down the mountain to the people is the command of Sabbath. And I say reiterate because as Lutherans, we would consider this the fourth commandment. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. All right. But throughout the book of Exodus, throughout the book of Deuteronomy and throughout the rest of scriptures, actually, the Sabbath is continues to be reiterated as a command that followers of God, followers of Jesus, should keep within their lives. Exodus chapter 31, verse 12. So the Lord says to Moses, You are to speak to the people of Israel and say, Above all, you shall keep my Sabbaths. For this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I, the Lord, sanctify you. You shall keep the Sabbath because it is holy for you. Everyone who profanes it shall be put to death. Whoever works on it, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh is a Sabbath, a solemn rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day shall be put to death. Therefore, the people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as a covenant forever. It is a sign forever between me and my people, the people of Israel, that in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave to Moses, when he had finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, the two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written with the finger of God. Now there's a pretty key point in here that if we don't highlight, we lose the understanding of the Sabbath and the life of God's people. So I'd encourage you, grab a pencil, grab a pen, grab a highlighter, circle, underline this text, even if you're using the Pew Bible, because somebody will read it at some point, okay? Verse 13, he says, you are to speak to the people of Israel and say, above all, you shall keep my Sabbaths, for this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I, the Lord, sanctify you. see, the, the sacred rhythm of the Sabbath is not a burden that is to be placed upon us, yet one more thing in which we fail to be faithful to God's commands. The rhythm of Sabbath is that we are reminded just how much God's love frees us and sustains us and nourishes us. The rhythm of Sabbath is a reminder to us that without God, we would be lost quite literally, forever in the wilderness. But in the rest and in the light of Sabbath, as we'll discuss, we are sanctified. We are loved. We have been chosen and set apart from the rest of the world 
solely out of God's incredible love for each and every one of us. So this isn't me just asking you to consider your physical health and the need for a break. The Sabbath is a rhythm God created in our lives to be freed and sustained as his disciples. So let me clarify some understandings of what could be considered Sabbath rest and what's probably not Sabbath rest. Not that the things listed on the not side are are necessarily bad in and of themselves. Just as we look at a biblical context of Sabbath, there's, there's a significant difference. All right? Sabbath rest could be a planned meal of celebration with your family. We are going to get together. We are going to celebrate. We are going to have a great time. It's not necessarily thoroughly enjoying your favorite meal at your favorite restaurant, like Chick-fil-A on a Sunday. Can you imagine? (laughs) Sabbath rest is intentional time set aside to rest in the presence of Jesus. It is not falling asleep during a staff meeting. Nobody wants to laugh at that one. Good. Sabbath rest could be spending your day reading or praying or feasting, spending quality time with others, meaning not on your cell phones. It is not working on chores or projects around the house to the point that you are exhausted. That's just getting your to-do list done. Sabbath rest could be planning and doing a time of spiritual retreat. Sabbath rest is not simply going on a family vacation. That is escaping the work and chores of life. Do you notice the difference? Sabbath rest that brings glory and honor to God is time set aside to be in His presence and to be fully engaged in the presence of those He places in our lives and to do so intentionally. Because it is a time to be refreshed and be renewed, to delight in what God has provided to you in life the blessings that he brings to you in, his, in your relationships, in your, belong, your belongings, even your dreams and your inspirations. Sabbath rest is not a time to finally accomplish your to-do list or to be so exhausted that you simply can't delight in the things that God has provided to you. And for too many of us, I think that's how we utilize our Sabbath. It's the day that we finally get all the chores done around the house to the point that our feet hurt, we sit on the couch, and we fall asleep during the movie. We've turned our, our day for Sabbath into a day to run from place to place or activity to activity. Some of us may actually get a family meal together, but too often it's rushed and unplanned and sitting in the car waiting for the next activity. Or we allow distractions into our conversations, be it cell phones or TV shows or any of those kind of distractions. Or we allow ourselves to be too tired to actually enjoy the many blessings that God gives us in our families, in our households, in our daily lives. But if we go back to Exodus 31, we hear the desire of God for his people in the Sabbath is that they find their joy They find their peace in his presence. And he commands the Sabbath and he gives such harsh consequence for disobedience because ultimately the Sabbath day is a reminder of God's love and care for his people and how much they need him and he provides for them. As disciples of Jesus forgiven and redeemed in his death and resurrection, I think the Sabbath can serve as a weekly reminder to us of the freedom that we now have. Freedom from condemnation and guilt. Freedom from performance or trying to be perfect. Freedom in our Savior Jesus Christ. Our time of Sabbath as disciples of Jesus serves to remind us how free we are in our lives from the guilt and weight of fear or performance or shame telling us there's more to always be done. Because Jesus made a pretty profound statement on the cross when he said, it is finished. It's already done in our Savior Jesus Christ. 
There's nothing more for you and me to add. And that's probably the biggest struggle we have in our Western culture. The concept that something can be finished when it's seemingly unfinished. I mean, how many of us check our work emails on the weekend because we didn't quite get through our to-do list that week? Or we just want to have a little bit of a head start on the week ahead? Yeah, I notice y'all don't want to laugh at that one either. Or if we don't work, how many of us schedule have a schedule so busy that time to go have coffee with a friend or to play with our grandchildren or even to visit with our pastor has to be scheduled three to four weeks out? I know that to be true because I've tried to schedule with some of y'all. Or how many of us as parents are wanting the best experiences for our children and so we take them from activity to activity on the weekend and we are so stressed and anxious the whole time that instead of seeing joy in our children doing the activity, we're worried if we're going to have enough time to feed them before the next activity that day. You see, the prime mode of operation in our Western culture is to outperform the other person. And then complain about how busy we are and we're just waiting for it to slow down. And then when it does actually happen to slow down, we start to feel like we're, fl- we're failing. And so we fill the slower time with more activities that when everything else ramps back up, it's just simply unsustainable. The sacred rhythm of Sabbath is absolutely necessary for us as modern disciples of Jesus. It's necessary not for our salvation, but to be reminded who we are as disciples of Jesus. Because Sabbath rest equals our peace of salvation. In Christ's death and resurrection, it's not about how much you've accomplished this week or how busy your schedule can be or how much you think you can do. In Christ's death and resurrection, your life is about His glory and His honor. And our desire is always to do more, to be more, to accomplish more. But all of that is about our glory and honor and not His. And so in rest, in our rest in Him, in the rest of our Savior, in that space of margin, in that space of renewal, we can be fed. We can be nourished. We can be grown as His disciples. Not because of our work and accomplishments, but because of His Spirit's work within us. Author Dan Allender wrote a book named Sabbath. And he draws out three main moves that happen in this intentional time of Sabbath, especially in the context of Western culture disciples. And I I think these moves are pivotal to us understanding how we can live out our purpose as disciples of Jesus, proclaiming the gospel, making disciples, moving the mission forward, and doing that in the sacred rhythm of Sabbath. The first move is that Sabbath moves us From division to shalom. Shalom here being the biblical picture of fulfillment, of completeness, of peace. Not peace in the absence of conflict, but peace as in conflict that has been reconciled. Brokenness that has been restored. Division that has been reunited. You see, so much of our lives is is spent moving in different directions. Whether we are married with children, married without children, we're single, we're widowed, we're going to school, we're retired, whatever our our life circumstance. So much of our lives is spent moving alongside others, but not necessarily with others. And Sabbath is an intentional time spent with one another and being united in Christ. The second major move is that Sabbath moves us from destitution to abundance. In the wilderness, the the Israelites were called to collect more food on the final day of the week to last through the Sabbath. 
And the question is always why? Well, for starters, they wanted to be reminded of God's provision for them, but also, and, and just as importantly, they were called to gather enough to celebrate together that God provides. Because God always provides. And on our Sabbath, when we're not working to provide the food on our table, because we are intentionally resting in Jesus, we get a glimmer of what the psalmist says in Psalm 23, when he talks about his cup overflowing and the blessings of God. Saturdays are usually my family's Sabbath day. More specifically, Saturday afternoons. When the weather is nice, we open the back door and we let the kids run and scream and play outside, not inside. And it's glorious. And then as the sun drops behind the other side of the house, I usually light up our grill. And I put on steaks, I put on burgers, I put on sausages, I put on chicken, I put whatever meat we're going to eat for that week on the grill on Saturday afternoons. It hasn't always been like that, but most recently, that, that time on Saturdays has become a sacred time for our, our family. A sacred rhythm, if you will, to delight in the, the provisions and the blessings of God upon our life. Namely, we get to enjoy our food, we get to enjoy our home, our time together as a family. Often we get to enjoy the weather, the moment to take a breath. And the weeks where we don't do Saturday, we'll either do Friday or Sunday afternoons. But I know it's a sacred rhythm in our life. Because any other day doesn't feel the same as a Saturday afternoon. The third move is that Sabbath moves us from despair to joy. The Sabbath has always been a foretaste of the feast that is to come. As the Israelites wandered around the desert, the Sabbath gave them the time to look forward to the land flowing with milk and honey. For us as modern disciples of Jesus, the, the Sabbath day gives us a chance to look forward to the day of the resurrection, the day where there is no more mourning or crying or pain or death anymore. It's not that those things don't exist on this special day because we still live in a sinful, broken world, but the Sabbath moves us from despair to joy because it's a reminder to us that Christ is still Lord over all things. And he has promised to, to return once more and to usher in that, ever, that day of everlasting life in his glorious presence. And the Sabbath reminds us that where Christ is, there cannot be darkness or the anguish of sin and its consequence. Allender in his book gives some special considerations for how we can prepare to live out the sacred rhythm of Sabbath in our lives. For our purposes, I'm going to encourage you to do the following few things to live out this rhythm. But understand that my encouragement is not for you to wait for a less busy time in your life and in your household. Because what we know to be true is that the world will always demand more of you. Always. But Christ's invitation to you as his disciple is to simply surrender your life to him. That in him you find joy and peace and rest. This is a rhythm that you can instill in your life this week in the life of your household. So number one, pray and plan. Because there is intentionality behind this time. You don't just happen to fall into the rhythm of Sabbath. God called his people to work for six days in preparation to rest on the seventh. And I'm not trying to argue for a six-day work week. <laughs> okay, we're not going there. But this day of Sabbath is also not just one more day to do work around your house that you're not being paid for. So with your family, with those that you want to spend this time with, invite others to join you. Plan it. Schedule it. Purchase the food you want to enjoy. Pick out the games that you want to play. 
Schedule this time on your calendar, not full of activity, but with lots of time for margin, for overflow, for simply being. I would even encourage you to consider the music you'll listen to, or the book that you'll read, or the workout that maybe you'll do. Maybe your family creates a playlist to listen to. Maybe you schedule a watch list of family movies for Sabbath. Because this is a time to be intentional and a time to be purposeful on how you spend that time. So that as you enter it, you're focused on our Savior and His presence in your life. You're not concerned about what comes next. And then pray for that time to be a blessing every day leading into it. Honestly, as I start praying for our Saturday afternoons about the time that my fingers hit the keyboard on Monday morning. Not because my work weeks are so hard, but because I long for that time with my family so incredibly much. Pray that our Savior will guard and protect this time for you, for your household, for those who may join you, because I'll be honest with you, rest in our Savior is not what is desired by the enemy. And he will work to thwart it. So pray for God's protection around it. And then live it. Again, don't wait for the perfect opportunity because it won't come. Your week leading into your Sabbath might be the best week of your life or it might be the worst week. The perfect week does not lead to the perfect Sabbath. Our Savior's presence and enjoyment in his blessing is what leads to Sabbath. This is not a rhythm of our life as disciples of Jesus to to be more effective or to better our performance. This is a rhythm of faithfulness. And it is a faithfulness lived out in the freedom that comes from our Savior who has already done everything for us. This rhythm isn't about doing everything the exact right way to reap the most benefit from it. Pray for it, plan it, but that's for the sake of intentionality, not for perfection. There is not a perfect way to Sabbath as much as there is a faithful way to Sabbath for you and your household. I'd even encourage you to take 10 to 15 minutes every day and live out a mini Sabbath of sorts in your daily life. A time you can close your eyes You can turn to Jesus in prayer, and you can simply be in his presence. This rhythm is not just a weekly practice. It can and should be a daily practice as well. So don't wait for that perfect time or for things to slow down a little. Our Savior's invitation is for us to Sabbath in him now, in this moment, so that he can renew us for what is ahead. And lastly, lavish in it. Just lavish in it. In the resurrection and the eternal life-giving presence of our Savior, I don't believe that we are going to be wanting or missing anything in our life. We will already have everything we will possibly need in the presence of Jesus. Our Sabbath is a rhythm to look forward to what is to come in Jesus Christ. So lavish in it. Don't use it as a day to clean out all the leftovers in the refrigerator. Save that for the next week. Don't use your Sabbath as a day to begin your new diet plan. Lavish in the blessings that God has provided to you. Great food to eat. Your loved ones, your friends, your health, your home, even the world in which we live the freedoms that we have as a nation, lavish in it all. Because it all comes from God. This weekly rhythm brings you fulfillment. Not in what you can provide for yourself, but in what God has already provided in our Savior Jesus Christ. And in Him there is no scarcity. There is only overflowing, abundant, generous love. The Sabbath is is a time to live out and experience that generosity. 
and we can do so by celebrating it in our homes. We teach the next generation what it means to be generous in the love of God, not from a place of obligation, but from a place of celebration and hope and joy. Your time of Sabbath is a time to lavish in the incredible generosity that God has poured out in your life. And it's a time to live out that same generosity with others. So may he renew you and strengthen you and feed you in Sabbath this week. In his most precious name. Amen.